Um, hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an animated GIF from a video clip. Um, I'm Nathan Sobic with Sobisource.com. Um, make sure you head over to Sobisource.com. Check out tons of other DIY projects, mods, and Photoshop tutorials. There's plenty over there, and more is being added all the time. Um, so in this tutorial. Um, Let's explain a little bit about why you'd want to make a animated GIF from a video clip. Um, for, uh, like one good reason is, is like uh, for animated profile. Like say you want to take a little short video clip of yourself using like a digital camera or something like that, and you want to make a profile pic that's animated, you know, to kind of stand out from everybody else. Um, that's how I feel about it, at least. Um, another reason is you can use them for avatars, for forums. I mean, just a ton of different things. Um, you can make this out of like any video clip. I would make them large because then you'd be doing a whole bunch of rotoscoping. But um, so let's get started. This is Photoshop CS5. Um, I can. This is Photoshop CS5, and um, let's get started. So I've already previously made a little video clip, which I'll go ahead and I'll bring in now. Um, so actually, I'll just go ahead and import. I'll just show you how to bring a video clip straight into Photoshop. Um, so we're going to go down here to import video frames to layers. This is a video clip that I've already made. Um, so let's just go ahead and click on that. Click load. Now one thing that's nice about CS5 is they've actually already added a option to make frames into an animation. Um, I love that they added that. Um, so it kind of helps you and try to, to determine what it is you want to do already. Um, if you, This is my video clip here in its entirety. Uh, I shot a little digital camera. So if you want to select only a certain part of it, you don't want to import the whole thing, what you do is you, just, uh, you figure out where you want to start it at. You would drag this arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and start just before I bring my hand up. I'm going to be looking at the camera and you'll click, hold down shift, click and drag, and we'll go ahead and go, actually we'll just go right there. It's about the peak. We'll go right there. So the little gray areas are only frames you'll bring in of this video clip. So you can use a much larger video clip and only bring in a small portion. So if you're s setting up a digital camera, you got to turn it on, you know, and then get in front of the camera, get lined up, and shoot your shot. Um, that way you can crop that part out and just keep the part that you want. Um, also, this is shot in 30 frames per second. So um, I don't really want every single frame um, because there'd be a lot of layers. So um, in 30 frames per second, every five frames seems to work pretty well, and you really can't tell a visual difference. You could, if you could change the setting in your camera to 15 frames per second, and then take in like every third, it'd be, it'd be almost the exact same. It's really up to you. So uh, go ahead and make frame animation um, check uh, box checked. This is going to help us out, makes this much quicker. Um, you can uncheck this, but you have to do it manually. So um, with this checked, every frame that it brings in, it goes ahead and and puts up an order in this little area down here from frame one to you know whatever the maximum frame is. So I'll click OK. Now it's already brought him in, and because of that checkbox, it's already actually made this little animation. Um, if you don't have this open, which it may not be open for you by default. You're going to go up to Window, and you're going to make sure the animation is selected. If it's not, you won't see it, and you'll just see the frames. Um, so go to Window, click the animation to show the animation window, and you'll see it's already in there as long as you had that box checked. Um, and over here, you'll see your layers. And you can kind of see how this works just by jumping to the next frame, and you see which frame it's showing. Okay. Um, I already know from experience that... Um, the uh, frame delay here, which is 0.03, which it chooses by default, um, in most cases, is too fast. Um, so yeah, uh, unless you want a speedy Gonzales look, um, that's what 0.03 seconds is going to give you. Um, a fast way to change all the frame delay at once is to select the first frame or the last frame, hold down your shift key, and then select the opposing frame. So if you start with the front one, you know, hold down shift and click on the last one. If you click on the last one, hold down shift, click on the first one, but you'll see a little highlights all. Um, we're going to change our frame delay here. At the very bottom, you see a little arrow. That's where the frame delay is. 
Um, it's not really a good default for this, um, so we're going to include choose other. I happen to know for 30 frames per second, for me at least in my opinion, 0.07 looks really well. So that's going to give us uh, a good a, a good speed. Okay, um, now I, I'm pretty uh, uh, anal about the way it looks, so. I'm actually going to uh, not just leave it this way. I could right now and just almost be done. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring it to the end and have it go in reverse back to the front. That way it has like a nice looping where the arm comes up and goes back down. And it gives me a chance to kind of show you how to do these manually as well. So in the last frame, you'll see the last frame, last layer. We're going to come down here to click. Uh, it's actually printing off the screen, but it says duplicate selected layer or in this case make a new layer so we're going to click on that last layer and then uh, come back down here to the next layer below it so new layer layer below it new layer layer below it and we're going to go through all of these I'm going to pause while I run through these real quick okay so I'm almost there layer below it new frame layer below it okay so now I actually have all of these done we're going to go back to the front press play then it goes in reverse I'm pretty happy with that okay so let's show you how to get into animated GIF now so that we have our animation set up we're going to click stop make sure our first frame selected I guess it really isn't important but I like to do that um, we're going to go up to file we're going to go save for web and devices this is going to bring up this box here let me resize this to get it in here which it will not. So uh, you can see everything that's important in there. Okay, so down here it shows what your your in size will be. Um, make sure that at the top, GIF is selected because it's the only one with animation in here. Um, 256 colors is fine. Dithering is fine. Um, down here is going to be your end size. Um, I resized the video prehand so it was 200 pixels by 200 pixels. I did that already before bringing it into Photoshop. Um, you can do that with After Effects or um, Adobe Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro or whatever software you like. Um, Movie Maker, I think, will do it. You know, just whatever you can just edit the overall size of your. But you can do it from here too. So um, 200 pixels by 200 pixels is fine. If you if you know what you're putting it into and they require a specific size, you could jump it down to say 150 by 150. Um, I like by cubic smoother. I think it has a little bit better effect. You can see there when I click on something else, it updated the size. Um, if you want to see um, down here, I need to show you these looping options. You have two major options: once, which will just play through once, and then stop at the end, um, or forever, which continuously loops. Now, once you click save, this setting is set. You can't change it after that. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, if your file size is a little bit large, because um, some places only can only give you a maximum of like 200 uh, kilobytes, if you need to get this down and you're okay with a little bit of um, graininess to your video, you can actually go up here where it says def uh, excuse me, selective. You can go to restrictive, and it kind of reduces the colors of pixels to like general colors. And uh, as you can see, it gets grainy, but it's still you can still see what it is. So if it's not a big issue as to uh, how grainy it is, you can uh, actually click over to Restrictive, which will um, make the file size a little bit smaller. Um, also, if you want to go ahead and preview it in a browser, you click Preview, and uh, this will show you what it looks like in a browser. Um, it'll give you the format, the size or dimensions, the size, a few things about it, and some simple HTML code if you need to use it. Um, so you can actually see it in a browser. This is what the final result will be. So when you're ready, you go ahead and you'll click Save, which will bring you up a Save option. You can save this to whatever you like. I'm just going to call this uh, uh, me underscore motion dot gif and that's it that's all there is to it make sure um, the image is only is selected unless you need it for an html file which then it'll give you the html and the image or it html only um, in this case if you just want the file to upload it someplace you just need images only 
Um, that's, that's all you need to change here. Um, just uh, choose your location. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Click Save. And that's it. You are finished. Um, so you can just uh, save your project or whatever. Close. I've already saved it before. Then you're just going to double click and you're going to see it in your uh, browser window. That is it. All right. Good luck. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me over at sobesource.com and I'll be sure to help you. Have a good day.